How's it going guys? Jocks here with another video. I know it's been a long time since I made my last one and I promised that I would start making videos more often. Of course, like many YouTubers, I failed on that promise. Regardless, I'm trying. Anyways, so a lot of things have happened in the last few months. For one, I graduated my boot camp and completed my full stack development certification. Yes! It was a hard thing, I, I, I'll be honest. Like, it, it, was, it was a whole lot. It was definitely a tough course. One of the toughest classes I've ever taken. In fact, uh, I think that it was harder than every other year of school I've ever done. And that's what taking multiple classes versus just one. And the reason why I say that is because of the sheer workload. For those of you that don't know, um, I decided to take my coding bootcamp at the University of North Carolina. My instructor was Jeff Hoffman. He's a great guy, shout out to Jeff. Uh, one of the best instructors I've had in a long time. UNC Charlotte was offering the bootcamp nearby. It was somewhere local for me and it was easy to do. They offered two courses. They offered a full-time and a part-time. I decided to take the full-time course because I wanted to get it done as soon as possible. And for some reason that happened to be a glutton for punishment. They already recommend that you don't work while you take one of these courses. Uh, but at the time I was working part-time and luckily my manager was flexible enough for me to be able to schedule around my coursework and the time that I needed to be in class. However, I don't recommend doing that. Now that I've graduated and as I reflect and look back on things, there are some things that I wish I would have knew before I took the course. And that's the topic of this video today. I wanted to talk about the top 10 things I wish that I knew before taking my coding bootcamp. Number one, the bootcamp is tough, consistently. The reason why I say that is I've always considered myself a fast learner. I've always picked up things fairly quickly and had no issues learning new skills or trades. But in this case, I wasn't prepared for the level of coursework that I had to do. That's not to say that I underestimated the level of work that I would have to put into the course. However, the work itself challenged me a lot more than I expected. So if there's something I could have told myself, I definitely would have told myself to expect some challenges and to meet them head on. The boot camp isn't something that was going to fly by really easily. It's not something that was going to, uh, that I was going to skate through like it did most of my courses in high school and in college. This was something that was going to challenge me in ways that I didn't expect, but it was definitely worth it in the end. Number two, balancing the full-time class, in my case, or even a part-time with a job makes the course even harder. Naturally, you'd think that automatically having to balance the coursework with your work schedule. However, for me, I did not expect the amount of coursework I would have. They talk to you in the beginning when you speak to the recruiter about how much work they expect you to put in outside of class. They start off with telling you they expect you to spend 20 hours outside of class coding. And that's on homework, side projects, practicing, reviewing, anything like that. For me, of course, I didn't put anywhere near that. Not on a consistent basis, at least. I took the full-time course, which required me to be in class from 10 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. And then after that, uh, my manager would always schedule me either from 3.30 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. up to 8.30 p.m. when I were at the store closed. So I, mean, I wasn't used to short, shorter shifts at work, but of course, with shorter shifts to make sure I had the amount of hours I was getting before, I had to work more days. So I didn't really have any days off. And if I did, it was probably like one every two weeks. Balancing that kind of work is gonna take a toll on your body. Lack of sleep, it's not gonna help. So make sure that you, if you're thinking about taking a course like this, any boot camp, not even just the coding one, and you're thinking about working while you're doing it, that you expect to have a game plan for managing your time because it's one of the most important things that's gonna help you persevere through challenges you may face throughout the course. Number three, study time is seriously important. I completely underestimated this in the beginning of the course. I walked in with a little bit of experience with HTML and CSS, having freelanced for a couple of years and building side websites and small projects for individuals or small businesses. I've had some exposure to it. Um, so when we started picking up and kind of diving more into it, where well, everybody else was kind of lost about what a div tag was or a p tag or things like that, I kind of had some familiarity with it to begin with. You may have some familiarity if you've taken free coding courses or if you've seen it before. Regardless if you have or not, study time is very important. The amount of time you spend out of class is really gonna determine how easy or how tough the course is going forward. Obviously, the more you practice, the more familiar you get with things and the easier it is to write or read or to put to practice the things that you've learned in the class. And you'll learn a lot, very consistently. It didn't help for us when we had a hurricane in the middle of our course that wiped out an entire week. Um, that made things even tougher when the full-time course is already slam packed with information and constantly moving. Uh, so you might experience a similar situation in which you'll realize that every day you're learning something new. So you gotta make sure that you put in the work outside of class to try and to try and review and make sure you really got a grasp on the things that you've learned. Because otherwise it's just gonna make things a little harder going forward when you haven't caught up on the things you've already passed. For me, number four is not everybody's gonna make it through the course. I didn't realize it at first, but when I, in the beginning of course, you know, every 
new environment or whatever, they usually try and do icebreakers where you get to know everybody in your class. So of course they went around and introduced everyone and had everybody talk about themselves. Uh, we probably started the class off with about 30 people. I think it was 27 or 30 people. By the end of the course, I think we had less than 18. Almost half the people had dropped out in the middle of the course. And they and this happened throughout the course from the beginning to the end to up to the very last week. And that's something that is expected in these types of environments that are highly rigorous, fast paced, and sometimes more than more people can handle. So don't expect everybody to make it through with you, but also don't use that as discouragement to think that you can't handle it. If you're really serious about taking a course like this, be it a coding bootcamp or any bootcamp for that, for that matter, uh, as long as you're serious about it and you believe in yourself that you, this is something that you want, you can chase it and I believe that you can make it through. That was something that was tough for me through the middle of the course. A lot of times I felt like I didn't know what was going on and that's something I'll talk about later on in the video. Uh, but that was something that I had recognized is that when I looked up in the middle of the course and it's like, five, 10 people disappeared. You're like, whoa, they dropped all this money on this course and they just quit. So make sure you're serious about doing it if you're thinking about taking this course because a lot of times it requires some type of serious investment. I had to take out a loan for mine and I wanted to make sure that wasn't in vain. So for me, number five is that you're constantly gonna feel like you don't know what's going on. And relax, that's normal. All right, so number six is that during the course, you may get a little depressed. And I don't mean that like in the sense of the course is terrible and make you feel bad about yourself. But I noticed during my experience at certain, certain points because I'm somebody who's very prideful and being able to take up new skills and learn things quickly, whenever I found that I felt like I didn't know what was going on, it made me a little upset with myself because I felt like there was something wrong with my learning style that kept me at a disadvantage compared to the rest of my cohort. However, after talking to some of my classmates and the TAs and my instructor, everybody reassures you that everyone feels that way. Not everybody expresses it, but everybody feels like they're behind and that's normal. As long as you keep at it with the course, you spend your time you're studying and you make sure you ask the questions necessary to make sure you understand, you'll do fine. And that's something that I had to learn. And to continue on with that, number seven is to make sure you utilize your TAs and your instructors. These guys have a lot of knowledge, especially the TAs as they've gone through the course as a student. The instructor obviously is a wealth of knowledge, but of course, as an instructor, they may be answering a lot of questions already, so they may not always be readily available. However, TAs, usually I had more than one in my class. We usually at least had two on board. We had up to four at one point. They always provided some useful information or at least a good starting point uh, whenever you were stuck or if they couldn't figure it out, of course, they would refer you to the instructor, but a lot of times they saved me a lot of uh, wasted time trying to figure out a bug or a problem just by taking the time to ask a question. So make sure if you have TAs available that you use them whenever possible because it's so much better to suck it up and ask a question, especially if you're stuck, than spending way too long trying to figure it out yourself and wasting a lot of time when you're already in a time like a jam-packed course that uses every minute because everyone counts. And to continue on with that, number eight is don't be afraid to ask questions. For me, it was at one point in the course towards the middle, toward the end, where I started feeling really bad because I felt like I was asking questions too often. And I spoke to one of my TAs about this and I was like, hey, you know, it seems like I'm the only person asking questions. And they assured me that, hey, make sure you don't stop because chances are you're helping your student, your fellow cohort as well, because they may be too afraid to ask a question. For me, at first I felt hesitant, but when I thought about how much money I spent on the course and how serious I was about it, I wanted to make sure I maximized every opportunity I had to make sure I fully understood and reaped as many benefits that I could from taking this course. So I sucked it up and asked the questions and at one point I even messaged some of my classmates like, yo guys, hey, I know I'm stopping the teacher every now and then, don't mind me. And I got a lot of positive responses saying that I was asking questions that they didn't even know they had that really helped them out. So make sure that if you're in a position which you don't understand something, take the time out to figure it out or to ask the question so that way you get everything that you need and you don't fall too far behind. It's okay to be a little behind because you'll always kind of feel that way, but make sure you don't fall too far behind in which you feel like you don't have the opportunity to catch up. Number nine is that you're going to compare yourself to your cohort. This is natural. And especially for me as a comparative person, I'm always comparing myself to people around me. Um, it's not a good habit. I don't recommend picking it up if you don't do it. Um, but it's natural that you may look at some of the other fellow developers and a lot of people may come in with experience. I had half my class come in with some sort of coding experience. Some people already worked in the industry. I had this one guy who paid the money just because uh, he was a scrum master and wanted to figure out um, what it was more like to be a developer so you could do a better job leading. Um, I had other students who literally came in with no coding experience at all and it was just trying it out on a whim. So don't feel bad if you notice other students are picking things up faster than you. 
chances are they had a little bit of experience with it or something's familiar or recognizable to them, it doesn't mean that you're doing poorly. As long as you're trying your best and you're making sure you're asking the questions to figure out how to understand the material for yourself, you're gonna do fine in the course. All right guys, lastly, number 10, make sure you reward yourself. I feel like that's something I didn't do too often while I was in the course, but when I look back on things, I feel like it would have helped. Um, the course was typically split up into three segments. In the beginning, I had my introduction to the front end side of things in which you learned HTML, CSS, basic JavaScript, Node, and a couple other technologies that help build the things that the user sees at the front of a website or application, things like that. After that, we went into the back end side of things. And then finally, we worked in the advanced back end. Um, which included using uh, different JavaScript frameworks like React, Angular, using databases like MySQL and Mongo, up until the point where we completed our last project. So for me, the milestones were the projects because we had three projects in the entire course. I think it's really important that as a student that you reward yourself as you progress through the milestones of the course. If you got, if you got to break it up based on the amount of time it takes and dividing it, um, by three, by two, by five, whatever works for you, just make sure you give yourself some type of reinforcement for just sticking it through. A lot of people can't even stick through. They don't wanna put in the effort, they get tired, they give up, and they quit. Just for not quitting, that means something. And if you, if you start feeling like you're catching on or maybe you got stuck on something for a while and then you figured it out yourself or you, had a, you worked with a classmate and completed a bug, um, things like that, they're worth rewarding yourself for. For me, I rewarded myself often by buying a coffee or an energy drink that I liked or even if it was just buying a nice meal. Uh, little things, it doesn't have to be anything grandeur. It's just anything kind of helps to make sure you reinforce yourself as you're continuing because it's going to be tough. But as long as you keep with it and you persevere through it, you're gonna come out on top, you're gonna complete the course, and you'll be glad that you did. Well guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I hope I gave some insight as to what I wish I would've known um, before I set the course. I think it was a great course and I'm really happy that I did take it. And I hope that these videos help either people who are currently in the course and a course similar to this or even thinking about taking a course like this because stuff like this is daunting. Especially if you're starting out as an adult or starting out in a career or even wanting to change careers, taking a risk like this can be an uncomfortable experience. So I hope that these videos kind of provide some insight and help you feel more comfortable with every decision you guys try to make. But if anything, thanks for watching. I'm gonna make some more videos pretty soon. Uh, probably some more information as to what I learned in the course and what I'm doing now that I've graduated. Um, so keep an eye out for those, like and subscribe, and let me know what else you wanna see. Thanks.